Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. I'm your host, College Fade. It's episode 7. And we're in the inn. And I was going to recruit a couple of people here. I was going to pay for a couple of mercenaries. But after doing a little research uh, to see if that was wise, it cost 2,000 gold pieces to recruit somebody. And I started thinking, well, maybe there's, maybe there's somebody not too far away. And uh, I think we can recruit a fifth person pretty rapidly and a sixth not too long after that. Gamil Hawks, a strange figure, towers over the bar. A huge, ungainly man with skin so milky white that his blue veins are visible even from a distance. His bald head is equal parts lumpy and pitted and blood-filled eyes stare impassively out at you from beneath his pale brows. The glass in the albino's large, clumsy hands looks dangerously delicate, as if one twitch of those calloused fingers would be enough to crush it. Gold medallion engraved with a tankard gleams around his neck. What'll it be? The medallion you're wearing. That's a sacred symbol, isn't it? Are you a cleric of Caden Kaleen? I'm a tavern keeper. Best in the city. The best there's ever been. And I pray to the best god there is. Hmm. How did you end up in the Crusader City? How did anyone end up here? How did you? Or them? With a huge hand, the tavern keeper gestures at the ragtag group assembled in the room. The world is big. But still, there isn't a place for everyone. People who no longer have a life anywhere else, they end up here. Are there any places in the city worth visiting? If you mean places that normal people usually stay well away from, then there are plenty, like the Pataxian Wine Cellar. Gimel pauses for effect, like the name of the place alone should make you quiver in fear. It once belonged to a Pataxian trading house. Then King Erovedi came to power in Patax, and property started changing hands. Soon after, the seller shop assistant was found in a ditch. Not all of them. Mine, just his head. Numerian gangsters had taken possession of the place. They wanted to sell something stronger than wine on the street. And they ended up on the gallows. Then King Yovetti's number was up. So, now the store stands empty and unclaimed. People say that a headless ghost wanders the place at night, moaning ghoulishly. Ooh. All right, I'm going to go. I wanted to do that because I knew that I had read that. In trying to find more companions, I had read that if you talk to him, he'll I'll reveal a location for you. So there's this wine cellar to the basement. I believe you can recruit somebody here. Yeah, so there are people here. Who do we? Oh, who do we have here? Guards. Hmm. Who's this clan? Surrender thy soul, Delvin. You may they protect us. Ha ha ha, got you again. How many times is that today? Take your jokes and shove them, tiefling. Oh, easy there, chief. Don't hit me. I'm not sure exactly how this is going to go, but this is a recruitable companion, this person over here. Hey, chief. Hey, Dreamboat, come over here. I want to talk to you about something. Something really important. The young tiefling sits cross-legged on the floor. He looks relatively calm for someone in shackles, but his tail whips back and forth in agitation. Noticing your attention, the tiefling sits up and beckons you over. Quit bothering the decent people in here, Wolgif, or I'll knock your teeth out. What's it to you, Delvin dum-dum? You were told to guard me, and I'm not stopping you. But no one told me I had to shut my trap. Who are you? Wolgif. Wolgif Jeffdo. I deal in useful things. I can get you whatever you want. Anything. But there's just one problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're in chains. Does it really matter? Don't get hung up on the past, Chief. Don't look to the future. Live in the here and now. He was caught thieving. Ooh. Your shadow. Who's that? <laughs> get me out of here and I'll tell you. And don't worry. It's not contagious. What do you want from I'll me? I'll lay it out for you. Simple job, 30 minutes tops. 
We go someplace, talk to someone, and in return, whatever you want, I'll get it for you. Some extra rations, no problem. Armor, weapons, scrolls, you name it. It's as good as yours. If you need my help with something, whistle and I'll be there. I'm handy enough with knives, too. And even my magic know-how isn't too shabby. <laughs> what a load of guff. If you were good at magic, you wouldn't be stuck in here now, would you? Don't you listen to him, Chief. He'd find fault with the Queen herself. I'll be useful to have in battle, and I'll sell whatever you want at a reasonable price. It's your lucky day. You won't meet another gem like me in Canabras. Hmm. I can't help you while you're chained up here. How can I free you? That's easy. You know Irabeth? Feisty looking gal, always wears armor. You can't miss her. She's the meanest fighter in the whole city. When you see her, put in a good word for me, will ya? Tell her there's this guy, Wolgif, locked up for no good reason in the Defender's heart. Well, for the follies of his youth. And he really wants to get out on bail so he can keep up his good behavior and make a contribution to society. You got that? Will you do it? Yes. All right. <laughs> I knew I could count on you. Knew it the moment I laid eyes on you. He's an arcane trickster, which is, as I said in episode one, it's one of the classes that's kind of like a fighter mage. It's really like the old school fighter thief. He'll be able to do some reasonable sneak attack damage and cast some spells. So it's a class I'd like to have. So Irabeth, where the heck is Irabeth? I know the way. Do you now? Okay. Probably over here somewhere. She's gonna be anywhere. Irabeth. Yes, there you are, you big orc. Irabeth rubs her red and tired eyes. Any success? How's the city? There's a tiefling chained up in the defender's heart. What can you tell me about him? Irabeth shrugs scornfully. Wolgif is a petty thief from a gang of tieflings operating in Canibris. That's what we call them in these parts. They tried to rob a vendor of magical items recently. Unfortunately, we apprehended only one of them, and the rest managed to escape. We have nowhere else to keep him apart from the Defender's Heart, but that's hardly a prison. Wolgif knows it, too. He's been begging us for days to let him go free and have someone vouch for him. He's already asked you to put in a good word for him, hasn't he? Mirabeth squints at you thoughtfully, then shrugs. If you want to recruit Wolgif and put him to good use, go ahead and take him off our guard's hands. We can ill afford to let a soldier spend their days watching over a middling thief. I hope the tiefling proves useful, should you decide to take him along. Alright, tell me about the Eagle's Watch. It was a small order created to fight not only demons, but also the enemy within. To maintain the purity of the paladin ranks, prevent heresy, and identify spies. And it failed miserably at that. The Templars of the Ivory Labyrinth infiltrated it and formed their nest within its ranks. The Templ Templars of the Ivory Labyrinth pledged their lives to Baphomet. These cultists schemed to subvert the good works of the Crusaders. They caused trouble in Crusader camps, instigating fights and egging participants on to greater violence. They spread lies and sowed the seeds of fear. With voices sweetened by magic. So, yeah, cultists. After the queen entrusted me with leading the order, an Eevee and I practically built it from scratch. We got rid of dead weight. People who weren't committed. We organized ways to transmit messages and order safely. We introduced reliable ciphers. We found tacit allies around the city. From crusader orders to street beggars. This was my personal crusade. To purge the city of the Templars who had infested it. And I thought I was winning. I could feel it. We were so close to driving the cultists out of Canebras. But, she frowns, it's hard to admit. But those successes didn't count for much once the demons entered the city. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> On the contrary, if it wasn't for you, there wouldn't be a headquarters at the Defender's Heart. The cultists would have served up the city on a platter to the demons. The lines on Erebeth's forehead softened. Yeah, that's true. It's a good thing we achieved something. Thank you. Alright. I'm gonna go get my tiefling. And then we'll go. Then we'll go do some stuff.
Well, Chief, what do you got for me? I talked to Erebeth, and I've decided to make you part of my troop. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> you must be a smooth talker. Come on, Delvin. Get these bracelets of yours off me. I'm going free. You're sure to regret this. This tiefling will fleece you for everything you've got. Mark my words. You're a bitter little man, Delvin. Petty and mean. You can't even be happy for me, can you? I pity you. I'll leave you alone with your sad little soul. So long. And now, Chief, straight down to business. <clears throat> you see, I'm one of those guys that people around here call thieflings. We just call ourselves the family. After we knocked over that shop and I got stuck here in the Defender's Heart, a little bird told me that big sister Karis may wanted to see me. That she had some questions to ask me. You following? Now, she won't be asking me questions like, Wolgif, how'd you manage to get out of this one? Or, Wolgif, you're so thin, didn't they feed you? No, something serious has gone down, and I just know they want to try to pin something on me. I can feel it in my tail. So, I knew right away that I couldn't go alone. You turned up just in time, Chief. You don't need to do anything when we get there. Just stand behind me and look mean, and I'll handle the rest. Somehow. Let's go. I'll, I'll show you the way. Thiefling's hideout has been revealed. This guy acts like he's got a spell of slow on him. Maybe he's just drunk. Alright. My thiefling. Ready to be recruited. Ready to join my party. Very nice. Okay. Let's go take care of business. Follow my lead. Follow my liege. Oh, and I've got a level off of that. Okay, let's do... Let's get everybody together and then we'll do levels. Hello, tiefling. Wolgif. Alright, so this is the global map. Nice. Some locations might not be available for travel for various reasons. As you explore the map and progress through the game, you will discover new locations and routes. Thieflings Hideout, Pataxian Wine Cellar, Grey Garrison, Market Square. That's where we gotta go. Okay, let's do levels first, though. Alright, for me, this is easy. Wizard, Thessalonian Specialist. We gotta go all the way to level 5 before we can start taking EK. You get skill points every level based on your intelligence score. So since my intelligence is high, I get f five points. And we're just going to keep poking him into things we already poked him into. It's really important to keep poking him into magic device because that will be useful later. Alright, so where we're at here is I've, I've got my whole entire level up scheme arranged in a in a document. That's what us Dungeons and Dragons nerds do, especially when you plan to play a class like this where you have to do a bunch of planning ahead of time. What we want right now is weapon focus, and even though it's going to give you the thumbs down on this, this is what you want. Um, and we want the scimitar, so right there, and it's going to give you the thumbs down on that too, but you need that. It says it's pre weapon focus is a prerequisite for a bunch of different stuff, and it's true. Um, we're trying to focus entirely on the scimitar and we need weapon focus uh, for slashing grace we need weapon finesse which lets you use so let me explain <laughs> I'll explain this after I choose this so we're gonna do this I gotta pick a couple new spells and what's it oh so we get our first level two spells you could scroll down here and see uh, how does it mark the spells that I already have? That's interesting. Oh, because right here. Okay, so these are the bunch of spells that I either already have or I can't get because they go against um, my thing. You can see these are all spells I already have. So these are spells we don't have. We could grab some more level 1 spells if, they, if we wanted to, if we thought there was something really important. And Large Person is actually going to be a really important spell going forward. Uh... And since right now we're the only mage, the tiefling may be able to use it too. But since we're the only mage, we're probably going to want to have that. And then uh, at 
this is going to be a spell that we'll want to use much later on when we're actually in Eldritch Knight. It's called Sense Vitals. It allows you to do a little bit of sneak attack damage, uh, like a rogue. You can see it says, this allows you to make, okay, I'm going to just hover this over. It allows you to make sneak attacks as a rogue ability of the same name, dealing an additional 1d6 points of damage, so you roll a d6. This additional damage increases 1d6 for every three caster levels you possess beyond third. And like I said in the very first episode, your first level of Eldritch Knight, you don't get any new spells, so it doesn't really count as a caster level, but every level after that is the same as getting a wizard level. So you'll end up being a, like a level 5 wizard, and then if this game went all the way up to level 20, you would be a level 5 wizard and a level 15 Eldritch Knight, and 14 of those Eldritch Knight levels would count as wizard levels, which is really, really cool. So up to a maximum of 5d6 at 15th level. Um, it, this is a great way to just do additional damage. As an Eldritch Knight with a scimitar, we're going to focus on critical hit damage we want to make our crit range as big as possible and we want to make it as easy as possible to get crits and do lots of crits but additional sneak attack damage is also nice but we don't need that yet because we're a long way from having to do that one of the and so one of our special spells is protection from alignment you can see these three thumbs up ones remember we took a, the Thessalonian Specialist in Abjuration, which blocks us off from Evocation and Necromancy, but lets us have two free Abjuration spells every spell level. And Protection from Alignment and Protection from Arrows are great. You can see Protection from Arrow, the subject gains damage reduction 10 magic against ranged weapons. The spell doesn't grant you the ability to do damage creatures with similar damage reduction. Once a spell has prevented a total of 10 points of damage per caster level, it is discharged, and then also protection from alignment. All allies within 30 feet gain a plus 2 deflection bonus to AC and a plus 2 resistance bonus on saves. Both of these spells, and including in resist energy, but both of these are really nice. Protection from arrows, though, only affects one character in your group. You can see it says one friendly creature within touch range. Protection from alignment is communal. It affects everybody in your group all at one time, so I'm going to take that. And we can buy a bunch of these other spells off a spell vendor and make sure we have them. So, all right. So that completes that. And then I want to go in and show real quick on the abilities. So right here with feats and all this other stuff. In fact, what's it say? Feats, traits. Let's see. Abilities, martial. Here's what I'm curious about. Because we took... Dun, 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 dun. Oh, that's her. That's why. I'm looking on this character. I'm like, how come I can't see what I'm looking for? Alright. So we took Weapon Finesse. You have to read these things very carefully, and then you'd probably still think this wouldn't work. With a light weapon, Elven Curved Blade... S-stock or rapier made for a creature of your size, you may use your dexterity modifier instead of your strength modifier on attack rolls. Notice, scimitar is not in that list. Taking weapon finesse and then focusing on a scimitar would normally be a very bad idea because you're not going to get to use your dex for attack rolls with a scimitar. But then you take weapon focus, scimitar, it gives you one plus one bonus on attack rolls great we're still not using decks the next feat we get will be slashing grace and that lets you apply your dexterity bonus from weapon finesse onto the scimitar and it also lets you use your dex bonus for damage on the scimitar that's how it works if you you would be correct if you went in here and, and saw weapon finesse and said why are you grabbing scimitar that's so dumb yes you would absolutely be right that would be terrible. What you want to do with Weapon Finesse normally, what I've normally done in the past, playing an Eldritch Knight in classic, more classic Dungeons & Dragons rules, is I've, like I said in the earlier first episode, I dual wielded short swords because they're considered a light weapon. They do pretty good damage. You either wanted to dual wield short swords or dual wield rapiers, and it depended on the game because some video games... The rapier is a great choice, and they don't present you with a lot of enemies that are basically immune to piercing damage. Other video games do, 
present you with a lot of enemies that don't take piercing damage well and so you wanted to roll with short swords instead they're both light weapons and so you take weapon finesse and it works you get your decks for attack here because of slashing grace you want to take the scimitar because the crit range is so much bigger and we can see that in the inventory in fact if we go over here and we look at this you can see the crit range instead of a normal weapon here's a good example here's a masterwork short sword the crit range is 19 to 20. here's a weapon here its crit range is 19 to 20. so if you roll a 19 or a 20 you have to confirm for a crit and uh is there anything oh and so here's an example of a really bad one great clubs have terrible crit range you have to roll a d20 to crit but with the scimitar you roll 18 to 20 and later on you can take improved critical i think it is and that spreads your range and makes it double so if you roll a 15 to a 20 you can confirm for, for a crit and there's another feat you can take that allows you to add a plus four bonus to the confirmation roll for a critical I mean, which makes it which makes it so that you confirm most of your critical hits by far. So 15 to 20 means you have a 25% chance every time you swing your sword of getting a crit before you have to confirm it, of course. Because on a dice from 1 to 20, 15 to 20 represents one quarter of the dice rolls. It's awesome. So that's what you want to do as the Eldritch Knight. Okay, we're done with him. Let's go over to our buddy here, the Monk Zen Archer. We're going to keep going with him. At third level, the monk gains a pool of Kai points. Supernatural energy he can use to accomplish amazing feats. The number of points in the monk's Kai pool is equal to one half his monk level <coughs> plus his wisdom modifier. Which is why you want them to have high wisdom. As long as he has at least one point in the Kai pool, he can make a Kai strike. At third level, the Kai strike allows his unarmed attacks to be treated as magic weapons for the purpose of damage reduction. Uh, but he's not going to be a fist-in-your-face monk guy. He's a monk archer. He's a Zen archer. So, Zen archery. At third level, a Zen archer may use his wisdom modifier instead of his dexterity score on ranged attack rolls. Wow. So, hopefully, his we can get his wisdom up if he wants to. Whichever one is higher, the game will use. And he doesn't have a lot of points to poke into things, so you give him athletics, mobility, and perception, because those are what he already has high scores in. And now, okay, so deadly aim. You can choose to take a minus one penalty on all ranged attack rolls to gain a plus two moment bonus on damage rolls. That's the end. The game is like you should recommended feature for that. Um, and since I really, I never play monks and I don't know anything about them, I'm probably going to have to do what the game recommends. Um, improve cleaving finish cleaving. Cleaving finish is something we want later. Let me let me run through this. This is a skill that we're going for with our Eldritch Knight. And you can see what it, if you make a melee attack and your target drops to zero or fewer hit points as a result of your attack, you can make another melee attack with your highest base attack bonus against another opponent within reach. You make only one extra attack per round with this feat. This is fantastic because most of the time as a frontline fighter you're going to have multiple enemies standing nearby so if you kill one dude you immediately get a kill swing at the next guy with your best base attack bonus and then if you go down here to improved cleaving finish you can use cleaving finish any number of times per round <laughs> which is really great if your wizard is standing behind you and shoots a fireball and a whole bunch of guys in front of you have low hit points you can sit there and slam down every single one of them. You just mow them down. It's awesome. Anyway, back to this guy. I have no idea what to do with him. Um, like, I would think taking weapon focus for like... Uh, uh, but I think he already has it. Does he already have weapon focus for a long, longbow? He must. Oh, it doesn't say he does. Like crossbow. Actually, what you can do is cancel out of this. And take a look at him and see what his feats are and stuff like this. This is the part of the game that always takes a long time is, is leveling up characters. And I like to go into detail about it. So let's let's see what he has. Weapon proficiency and longbow. Okay. He has that. And he gets that automatically as part of his class. So the only thing you can really do after that is like weapon specialization and stuff like that. Give, give him more. He's got weapon focus, longbow. 
which gives him a plus one bonus on attack rolls. So anything that's going to help him be a monk zen archer is uh, what I want him to do. So deadly aim is good. And then uh, what else would he possibly be really, really good at? I'm not sure. Skill, no. Mm -mm. Nope. So I think that's probably going to be the best thing for him. Rapid shot, okay. When making a full attack with a range attack, you can fire one additional time this round at your highest bonus. All your attack rolls take minus two penalty using rapid shot. Uh, it gives you an extra arrow at a worse chance to hit. I've never been a huge fan of that, so... Uh, and then there's a whole bunch of that. What you can do, these ones that you can't take right now, you can see it's because you don't have the prerequisites. Sometimes it's really useful to go down here and look and see, well, at, at, at what you might want to It's just fun to go through this list, let me tell you. It's fun to go through this list and look at things that you might want to take and what you need to do to get there. It really helps to plan your class ahead of time, which is why I was saying in episode one, if Pathfinder had anything like the Neverwinter Nights character creator, it would be fantastic. But they don't. So, greater penetrating strike, fighter level 16. See, you can look at some of this stuff and see, oh, I'll never do that because I'm not a fighter level 16. So, we'll take deadly aim. Because that'll be easy. Point blank master. So... Benefit. Choose one type of ranged weapon. You do not pro provoke attacks of opportunity when firing the selected weapon while threatened. This is great. If he's standing... Sometimes enemies will run up to your ranged people. And if they're standing right next to him and they try to take a shot, they get that free attack of opportunity. This, this negates that. So I want to go with a longbow on that. That's part of his class feats. She is um, an interesting class. Spirit Hunter... So far, we've been playing her kind of like a rogue because she has she has the trickster stuff as far as um, d disarming traps and things of that nature, and she's got a rapier. So, <coughs> um, it's it's a really weird class. <laughs> it's a really weird class, and it makes me wonder what kind of prestige class it might go well with. But a lot of times when they have these classes like that in these games with your companions, you just want to keep taking their straight class. It's usually, it's almost always better to just do this than try to combine a whole bunch of different classes. So what she has is, yeah, she's got trickery, which is going to help her handle locks and traps. And then the next thing that she's got a lot of points in is perception, but we already have other characters that have higher perception. But nothing else is really high for her. Use magic device. I'd like her to be able to keep using scrolls and spells and stuff like that. So we'll do that for her. Um, so, so weapon focus. Does she not have weapon focus for her rapier? No, she doesn't. So there it is. So we're going to give her that. That gives her a plus one to bonus attack rolls. So we're going to use her as a run up there and stab things with her rapier. And maybe, um, maybe she can do quite a bit of damage. We'll see. And our paladin. Paladins are usually pretty easy. Paladin, uh, lore, religion, that's a good one for her to have. Knowledge, world is a good one for her to have. And then uh, persuasion, she'll be a persuasive character. So here's the thing with the paladin. Now you get into this position where it's like, what do we want to do with the paladin? Because what would be a great weapon for her to have? Um, she's got a really... Here's the problem. She's got a really powerful glaive right now. But I don't think I want her going through the whole game being a glaive warrior. It might be a pretty good idea, but who knows if there are any good glaives later on. And since she's a frontline fighter, it probably makes sense for her to have, uh, you know, shields and things like that. And just kind of play defense. So, power attack. Okay. Strength 13. Um... This could get her cleave and cleaving finish later. So I'm a little hesitant to commit to weapon focus for her right now. Because I don't know what kind of weapon she's she might be the best in. What I'd probably like to do is give her a shield and a long sword. That'd probably be the best thing for her. But we don't have good weapons like that right now. And what she does have is the glaive. So I don't want to focus on the glaive. That would be a mistake. We'd have to undo that later. Or we'd have to... 
we'd have to respec her with the respec character, and you probably get like three free respecs from that guy, and then you're done, and then you got to pay for him. So what I like to do is we know we're gonna want to take power attack with her, and then later on get her cleave, and then get her cleaving finish. We'll want to do those. So let's just grab power attack now. She gets three mercies. Whenever Paladin uses Lay on Hands to heal damage to one target, the target is no longer fatigued or shaken or sickened. So what's the most likely thing that's going to happen to us? Um, fatigue, the character takes a minus two to dex and strength. Shaken, I'm not 100% sure. And sickened, I'm not 100% sure. So I think I'm going to go check on those real quick. All right, so with a shaken character, they take minus two to attack rolls skill checks saves a bunch of other stuff with sickened it's exactly the same thing as shaken except they also take minus two to damage rolls both of these are bad i think shaken is probably something that you'll run into more than sickened i'm guessing i could be totally wrong we're fighting demons we may end up being sickened more often than shaken but i you know you can only take one so we're going to take one and roll with that. All right, all of our characters there. We're going to head to the market store. Oh, and before I do, one thing I have to do is get my spells. Okay. So, we'd have to rest to do this. Bullshit. Summon small elemental. That thing, you summon it, but it's not going to hit anything. I think what I'd rather do is... I need to buff one particular character like our paladin to make sure that they can smoke some people that'd be great um okay we'll have to rest to use those spells but do we want to rest right now can we yeah we're gonna go we're gonna roll with what we got the journey will take you now fallen horse continue there's fallen horse you failed to sneak past the enemies. Prepare to fight. Okay. That's interesting. Yet another obstacle. Oh, look. Okay. Oh, that was no good. That bit me. Ugh. Okay, what do we have here? We got a big old spider over there. And then we got this bug. And then we got that spider. He's last to go because he just went. If we can kill this one, then it doesn't get an attack at all. Fiendish giant fly. It's a ver level 2 vermin. She did some damage to it. Didn't quite kill it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use a 5 foot move here to put myself between these two. So she can handle them. The the tiefling. Yeah, he can get up here and he can... What's... Oh, okay. We didn't see what this guy's abilities were. Immunity to conditions. Your enemy giant spider is immune to the condition frightened. Some creatures are immune to certain conditions, yes. So what is he? He's got 20 decks and an 18 int. So he's really good for his class and his abilities are what? He's got finesse training and dagger. Okay. That tells me a lot. Yeah. Eldritch scoundrel. Nice. He's an eldritch scoundrel. Students of Arcane Magic, Legermane, and Stealth. Eldritch Scandals are a rare breed. He's not an Arcane Trickster. He's an Eldritch Scandal. Okay. It's kind of the same thing. Um, as far as I remember. He's got Weapon Finesse. He's got two Weapon Fighting. Oh, this is great. He's got Double Slice. This is really nice. You add your Strength Bonus to Damage Rolls made with your Offhand Weapon. Although he doesn't have a Strength Bonus, but he will if he's buffed or he's wearing a belt. Um, this is great. He can scribe scrolls. Allows you to craft scrolls during camping. That's really nice. Okay, I like this. Trap finding, sneak attack. Great. Eldritch scoundrel. Perfect. So what's he actually using? What's he wielding right now? He's got two daggers. Masterwork dagger and a masterwork dagger. And he's got a bunch of scrolls. And he's got braces of armor. Excellent. And because he's an arcane class, he's not going to want to wear armor. Uh... You won't want him wearing armor, because he he'll, that'll cause failure in spells. Unless he has something specific that, which I don't see. <coughs> yeah, I don't see anything that would say that. So, fiendish resistance. They have resistance to electricity, cold, and fire. Plus five, nice. And he's a tiefling, yeah. So, 
All right. They have plus two racial bonus to dex and intelligence, which makes them ideal to play the same class I'm playing in Eldritch Knight or this class. The only reason I play the human is because I wanted the extra feet. It allows you to get slashing grace early so that you're ready by the time you can start wielding a weapon to wield your scimitar. Okay, so this is cool. Uh, go up there and finish this guy off then. Oh, nice. He dealed 20 damage on that thing because of his sneak attack. And he's got high decks, so that thing missed him, which is great. <clears throat> okay, so the next one that's going to go is the spider over here. So it's this. We keep clicking this for her. Uh, swift action grants a plus one bonus for every minute that she's holding the weapon. So. I'll cut you wide open. She tried. Now, I am not a fighter right now. So I'm going to use a five foot to get away. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to shield myself <laughs> so I don't take any more damage. All right. And now here's our bow and arrow guy. Okay, and that spider's down. And that gives her a chance now to just pummel this thing. She's got power attack going on. Yeah, so plenty of damage there. That was nice. Okay. And what's... It? And this is interesting... In Pathfinder Kingmaker, if an object, if a dead body could be highlighted, you could get some loot off of it. But now they just have this circle with the eye on it for information. So you can, I guess they did that because they, they thought maybe people didn't get a chance to inspect it while they're fighting it. So now you get to inspect it when it's over, um, and see what it's like. That's as it should be. That's interesting. Okay, so what I want is I want me in the last spot, and I want to take a look at this. Yeah. Formation. I know about that. So, let's see. I want the archer in the back with me. We're the backyard guys. Good. Alright. Oh. These games always make me so giddy when we get into just, you know, the adventuring. <coughs> Excuse me. The adventuring and the combat part of it. I don't know what that is. Fallen horse. Okay. We'll check that out on the way back. This, I've said it before, this has a real Mask of the Betrayer vibe to it. And it also has a real, uh, the first Neverwinter Nights game um, had a really great expansion called Hordes of the Underdark. And it very much reminds me of that as well. Knowledge Arcana. A trivial matter. These enormous cracks appeared after a magically induced earthquake struck the land. I love that you can rotate the camera now. Oh my gosh. I, like I said, I know I'm going to say that a bazillion times, but it's a really big deal to me. Which way do we want to go? What's the map look like? Oh, yeah. Okay, so you can go down there. You keep going. Well, I'm going to go this way. Let's find out what we're dealing with here. Do not fear. Do not oh! Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't want you going anywhere. Let those guys come here. What do you got? Mage armor. Okay. I'm going to have you do that to yourself. It lasts for one hour per level, which is really nice. He's going to run up here. He's got like... They, these things get three attacks. So you want to make sure you kill him. Yeah, offense, two feet melee claw plus four, two feet melee claw plus four, two feet melee bite plus four. Three attacks. So, let's do our best to kill these things. And their immunities, they're immune to poison and they have resistance, or they're immune to electrical energy altogether. Oh, it says energy resistance. Acid, cold, fire. Wow. So, and it's immune to electricity. Great. Um, that's not hard to deal with at all and it's got damage reduction except a cold iron okay uh, it's too late to change weapons right now but I want to check masterwork dagger cold iron masterwork dueling sword nobody can use that cold iron masterwork long sword so this is the thing over here she's got radiance which is really nice this is a cold iron masterwork long sword okay that's important for her because uh, we got to bypass their damage reduction. She can only use a few things. Cold Iron Masterwork Javelin. She's not proficient at it, but since it's Cold Iron, uh, it would get by their damage reduction. 
There's a long spear. I don't know if it's better for her to just poke with her regular weapon or or try to use something that's cold iron like this. So I'm gonna put. Oh, I can't, this says it's locked out because once you start combat, yeah. once you got combat, there's nothing you can do. Okay, I got you. You've crossed the wrong mongrel. Yeah, you can see the damage reduction happening. So with her. I think I'm going to switch to the cold iron one. And that costs you half a move. But see, it makes it easier for her to kill those things. I'm not going to be able to kill anything. I'm not even going to be able to hit anything. That's okay. Remember, we're... We're on delayed coolness. We're delayed awesomeness. <laughs> but we will be awesome someday. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's... Just try to poke him. The spirits demand your blood. It's not much. Zap you or zap you? Why not both? It's a nice sneak attack. That thing's gonna get three attacks. But it's having to roll against a 20, so it's kinda great. Okay. That's nice. So, over here with her, I'm gonna have her carry this cold iron masterwork javelin around. In case she needs it. And then he doesn't really have a choice on anything else he can do. He's just got to use these composite longbows. So. And the reason you want to use the co composite one is because you can see the difference here. Look where it says up in damage. 6 to 13 damage on the composite longbow. And the, he's got a masterwork one over on the other side in the inventory. The composite longbow allows you to add your strength bonus, in his case a plus three, to shooting. So that's why you want to use that, is for the extra damage there. Um, and he, I don't have anything for this guy, what is this, masterwork short sword. But I don't have any kind of like cold iron dagger, which is what I was really hoping for. And he doesn't have one, so. So that's alright. We'll roll through those first two enemies. We got some some loot there, but we got to go around that barricade. Some dead people up here. <coughs> There's a dog. Oh, look at that poor little critter. It's like, hey, my master. My master got canoodled. What do we have here? Who's this? Marauder Illusionist and a rookie Marauder. Okay, let's take a look at them. She is a three wizard and he is a two warrior. Okay, well, me, being who I am, I'm gonna be shooting at the wizard. Oh, it used the spell and I didn't mean to. How the hell did that happen? This game's got something funky going on there. Uh, that was not at all what I wanted to have happen. Okay. The world in crimson. Critical hit, that's nice. So here comes another rookie mark. Yeah, I would have saved it until they were all clustered together. I was just trying to shoot my, my crossbow. Ah. Okay. How much is this rookie? He's a level 2 warrior. For our okay, Tiefling, come over here and stab this guy. That's nice. You got see sneak attack damage and critical hits early in the game are, are nice for you. That's fantastic. She's she's got my favorite spell up early, uh, which is mirror image, which creates a bunch of duplicate copies for her. So the best thing to do is probably shoot this guy. Survive me. And then I can send my paladin down here. And in the case of my paladin, since these aren't... I'm going to have her switch weapons and come down here. Yeah, why did it say that the spell... See, now I can see the icon. It shows a little error. Why did it decide to cast a spell? Is it... Yeah, the AI wasn't on. That's really strange. Okay, well, this should do it. take one of her mirror images off, and then move. 
she's going to get a chance to go down here. But she's not going to get a chance to poke. She gets her attack of opportunity and missed, which we knew that was going to happen. He's not close enough. So, again, attack of opportunity. There's someone sleeping there. We need to we need to coup de gras that person. This. Okay. You can you coup de gras that person? Oh, it says no. Did you did you step too far? No actions left to turn. You need it as a whole round action, that's why. Okay. Mirror image. Let's try this way. Let's not. All of her mirror images should be gone now. Oh, she tried to cast a spell and everybody got the chance to, to do their opportunity of attack and so they nailed her. Um, this person should be able to do a full attack then and coup de gras this one. Oh look, he's going in his full pose. He's like, yeah! Oh, that's so nice. I like that. That okay. is not far. Grab all the loot, my friends. Now, was there anything else up here? Is there any loot up here in these barrels? Nope. Okay. Well, I'm just having a really good time with this. This is There was that one boss fight at the end of the prologue. I'm I'm considering that like the end of the prologue. They didn't call it a prologue officially, but that's what it felt like to me. And that was a little ridiculous. What do we have here? So these things look, I mean, wooden plate, two gold pieces, wooden mug. I'm not grabbing that. But I will take your money. Rusty horseshoe. These things are not worth anything. Now, rainbow quartzes. That's nice. What's going on here? We got crusaders? Okay, let's go see what's up with these guys. We'll make this quick. She won't feel a thing. I don't know. Can we really do this? Listen, we don't have a choice. There are demons everywhere. What else would you have us do? A group of knights surrounds a young elven girl. She is dressed in rags that barely cover the hideous scars on her body. The beggar girl is on her knees, watching placidly as the people argue heatedly around her. It is as if she doesn't sense the looming threat at all. A black crow flies in agitated circles above her head. In Iomade's name, we're sorry, girl, but it is our duty. We have to do this, not for our own sake, but for the sake of everyone who can still be saved from the demons. If we don't win this battle, you won't have long to live anyway. The knight brings his sword up above the girl's head. They're insane. We've got to do something. I understand. You're scared. You feel powerless. Do you think this will help? You don't have to justify yourselves to me. Just do what you've decided to do. The girl smiles serenely as though she isn't at risk of imminent death. What's going on here? The knight's hands are shaking. Our weapons barely scratch the demon's hides. We're sacrificing this girl to Iomade so we can consecrate our weapons with her innocent blood and gain the power to destroy the spawn of the abyss. There's easier ways to get plus one weapons, guys. It's extreme, but we have no other choice. We have to defend this city somehow or else we'll all perish, including her. Hmm. Which one of these do you think we can actually pass? Not intimidate. I don't think we're strong enough. Diplomacy? Mm. I don't have very... Hi, I'm going to do try lore religion and hope my paladin can do it. That's ridiculous. The teachings of Iomade directly prohibit the killing of innocents. That sounds like a pretty common thing with religion and the things people get wrong about religion, doesn't it? The goddess will curse you for making this so-called sacrifice. How do you know what the goddess wants or doesn't want? Who are you, a herald? Maybe. I am Iomade's paladin. If I lie, may the goddess strike me down. What you intend to do is a repugnant crime and heinous blasphemy. Exactly. What were you thinking? The goddess would never allow this. 
Whose idea was this anyway? I think it was yours. My idea? I was against the whole thing right from the start. Who said we needed to make a sacrifice? Wasn't it you? You can't blame anyone else for that. Please don't fight. All of you are good people, defenders of the city. You just made a mistake. Please don't hurt them. The little girl is defending the people who wanted to slaughter her a minute ago. She's either a saint or she's insane. Maybe the two together. Says the man who is literally two halves of two different creatures. Hey, I know her. I see her all the time on the street. She's a couple of cards short of a full deck, if you know what I mean. Hi. Remember when we used to play together when we were little? But then you went and got all big. And I stayed the same for some reason. Huh? I've played with you? <laughs> Pull the other one. You did. We played tag and hide and seek. Then you and the bigger boys came up with the game where you all threw stones at me. You laughed so hard. It made me happy too. But then you grew up and went away to do grown-up things. Want to play with me now? For the love of... Canabras is too damn small. <laughs> uh, go to the Defender's Heart Tavern. It's where the survivors are gathering. And don't even think of doing anything so disgusting ever again, you dumb guards. Thank you. Alright, the knight hurries away before you can change your mind. Gone. And they all lived. I was sure that someone would die today. So many people have died here already. But we are still alive for some reason. Strange, isn't it? But you shouldn't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just a silly girl, really. Who are you? Call me Ember. I live here, on the streets. For many years now. But there's nothing to say about me. Hmm. I don't think you're an ordinary girl. And that crow you have there. It's not ordinary either. No, don't be silly. I'm very ordinary. Well, I know different types of tricks. But Soot taught me those. Now Soot here, she truly is unusual. She's clever and she can talk, but only to me. She teaches me magic tricks and lots of other stuff. I don't know what I'd do without her. Magic tricks, you say? You could prove useful in fighting the demons. And I'll be able to protect you from insane soldiers on the streets. Come with me. I must have misheard. This girl? Join our party? What could we possibly want with this dirty little beggar? Sure. Let's go. What could we possibly want? Well, for one thing, there's strength in numbers. <laughs> and and I'm a pragmatist. <laughs> What's in here? Into the house. Let's see what's in this house. If there's anything worth. Save the last oh. One for me. Oh no! No! It's a swarm. Oh man. Okay. Well, this is a way proper way to end this episode. Swarms suck. <laughs> and the and the only way to deal with them, I should have. I should have checked her out. What she got? She's got high dex, really high charisma. What kind of class is she even? She's a witch, stigmatized witch. She's a stigmatized witch. Mm. Okay. The witch can make her enemies vulnerable to energy. This hex lasts for a number of rounds equal to the witch's level, during which an energy resistance or energy immunities on the target are suppressed. Oh, that's going to be really useful. Because we just saw those things earlier that were invulnerable to electricity and had a whole bunch of like fire and cold resistance. And she can make that go away. Wow. Okay, that's a really nice hex. Wow, vulnerability curse. Jeez, that's what I've been looking for. Slumber. Okay, she can basically cast sleep. She has a raven familiar. Gives her plus three bonus on persuasion checks and a plus two on per perception checks. Okay, she learns hexes. And she gets precise shots, so she needs to be shooting. All right. She's our hexer. <coughs> well... The interesting thing about that is I'm less concerned about her hexes right now than her ability to kill things, which is going to be really hard because <laughs> we don't have, do we have anything in here that's going to help against the swarm? Oh man. See, 
inflict serious wounds. Can, will that work? I'm not sure that'll work against these. Swarms are just the worst. And, and these guys rightfully, and by these guys I mean Owlcat, the developer of this game, they rightfully got kind of bashed uh, during Pathfinder Kingmaker for the early swarms making parts of the early game just like impossible so summon monster summon small air elemental someone else would make better use of this no they wouldn't I would I don't need this you turkey okay uh, yeah we don't have anything to throw at these swarms so um hers are locked hers are locked Oh my gosh. Oh, they're all locked, which is really just brutal. Because we need uh, this ability to, to use the... You can do some damage with an ever-burning torch. <laughs> oh, it's paltry. It's so paltry. Oh my gosh. Okay, this could be a complete disaster. Potion of Inflect Light Wounds. Uh, can you use that? Okay. Uh, this is going to be hard then. What about you? Can you... What are her hexes? Ear piercing scream. Target is dazed. That doesn't really help. She's got cure light wounds. She's got burning hands. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, I'd kind of like to do mage armor on her, but... I need to get her out in front of everybody so she can cast this spell. Right there, something. See? Okay, burning hands. Okay, see, it still didn't do a lot of damage. So this can dazzle our enemies, which might be Oh, and we also have this. Acid splash. Okay, what do we have? So two damage. That was pathetic. He's not going to be able to hit it. Because you can't hit a swarm. What else has he got here? Kai power attack. I'm going to move this down here. Yeah. Make every strike. Oh, he actually hit it. Can you hit swarms now? Rat swarms. Maybe they changed it then, because in Pathfinder Kingmaker swarms were the were, were basically the death of you. <laughs> it, was, it was not good. Okay, all right. Um, can you get over here and kill that thing, Camellia? You are today's sacrifice. She can did some, she did some point damage to it. These things are gonna. Oh, and she did one point there too. rat swarms okay what else does he got he's got burning hands as well but we got people in the way so I'm gonna just try to kill one swarm here. Them for me. <gasps> you missed with both of them you turkey okay what if I do five foot step here can she hit this thing no she can hit this one Okay, then she did a living damage on that one. That's nice. You, sister girl. Huh. Where can you step to? Right there. Okay, that kills one of them. It got me too, but I can easily fix myself. There we go. All right. Okay, so this is nice. The rats, the, the rat swarms can actually be killed. Then I like this. This is. Go for their heart. They're not like the spider swarms were. Those sucked. Time we'll get to share your treasures. Oh. Huh. Oh, they got him from the attack of opportunity because it wanted to run around the room. Well, that's nice. What do we got? Mix of spices, tainted fowl. Seasoned thighs and wings. Oh, 
it's a recipe. So what you want to do with those is you go in here and type by date from uh, newest to oldest and you can see that recipe. And you want to go in here and copy the recipe so you can learn it. And that will give you a chance to uh, make food. New recipes. You have found a new recipe for seasoned wings and thighs. To learn it, right click, memorize. Different recipes require different ingredients and dishes cooked using them grant unique bonuses. Alright, so. Trap. Alright. Pick the lock at 90. Show me what you got. I hope you appreciate what do we have here? A dagger, a short bow, short sword, hide armor. It's hide armor plus one. Well, let's see about that. Tiefling. So, what's the arcane spell failure chance? is 20% on it. So there's really only a couple of people that can even wear it. Um, she's got the Crypt Raider's armor on, so it would oh but it allow her to have four dexterity so is her armor her armor class is 19 with that okay so she still needs to be wearing this then everybody else is like oh he can't wear armor because he's a monk he can't wear armor because he's an eldritch scoundrel <laughs> I can't wear armor because I'm a wizard. She can't wear armor because she's a witch. And she she can wear armor, but she can only wear medium and light armor. Oh my god, we're like the most unarmored party ever. Holy cow, that's cracking me up. I'll go ahead. Okay, that's pretty funny. Um, I'm I'm having a, a good laugh about that. Uh, no mistakes. I don't I don't want to get killed here. I'm laughing though. That's really funny. All right, that's where we're going to end this episode. Um I'm just laughing. I'm just dying. I've never had a party with this this less amount of armor before. Uh typically when I've played a fighter mage in Dungeons and Dragons games like Baldur's Gate and stuff like that, I'm the only person running around in a robe unless there is a like cleric wizard like Ari who had to wear a robe because she was half wizard. Um or you know Edwin was it, only the wizards wore robes and everybody else had armor and now it's like I've got a whole bunch of a whole bunch of melee fighters that aren't wearing armor or you know archers that aren't wearing armor it's just it's strange it's cracking me up all right thanks for watching everybody as always dig the episode give it a thumbs up drop your questions and comments down below subscribe to the channel my patreon is listed in the description below and I'll see you all next time thanks for watching <laughs>